I have lupus. I have type 1 diabetes. I have Hashimoto's. I have ankylosing spondylitis and Crohn's disease. One day, it was December 19th, like I'll never forget it, and I just woke up and my right foot was really swollen. Honestly, throughout my life, I've had like health issues. I've had periods where my body is just shut down and I couldn't move. I got rashes throughout my entire adolescence, and I just thought that was just me. And I just thought it was stress-related. I remember just going through one of the most stressful semesters I've had in college. And I was feeling really manic. Like, I thought I was going through, like, an episode, because for a few months I would feel, like, really good and have lots of energy and just, like, racing thoughts, and it, it was, like, kind of jittery, and I was losing weight, and I felt like, oh, that's great. And then I would be eating the same food, and a few months later, I would be really like tired and I'd feel really emotional and really depressed and I'd be gaining weight and I didn't really change anything in my lifestyle. My mom took me to urgent care and they did an x-ray and they said I had a hairline fracture. To this day, like, I don't think I did, but I don't really know. So they gave me like this little butt booty thing to walk around in. You know, you're supposed to wear it for like a few weeks and after those few weeks, nothing had changed and it had actually kind of gotten worse. My foot was more swollen and now my big toe was also really swollen and hurt. That was kind of just like the beginning of a six month process of going to dozens of doctors and getting like so many different diagnoses. So by the time I was in college, I was getting sick a ton and after I had graduated, I went through a period where I just could not move my body. It literally felt like I had been run over by a train multiple times. People would be like, well, what's feeling bad? And I'm like, uh, everything. The only uh, signs or symptoms that I was getting were um, I was just thirsty a lot, like all the time. Like I just needed a lot of fluids. And so by extension, I was just like peeing a lot. And I went to the doctor and they thought, oh, were you like, you're depressed? We're maybe gonna give you some pills. Cause I just didn't know. I was crying in the doctor's office. I was crying everywhere I went. I did my physical and my results came back and my um, thyroid was all off. You know, a doctor told my mom that I had leukemia while I was in the room. And just like uh, so many other random diagnoses. Um, until finally my mom took me to a rheumatologist who diagnosed me at the time with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. It wasn't until my mom told me that lupus actually runs in my family and I should get tested for it because I had been to doctors. They never seemed to test autoimmune <laughs> diseases first. So I had to literally beg them, please just like run some tests for it. For a few years I thought, okay, I'm just like living with this arthritis thing. And then my freshman year of high school, I started having lots of stomach issues. I had a colonoscopy and I was diagnosed with colitis. It was only until like I, we, I went on vacation after the semester ended with my family and stuff. And uh, my mom actually started noticing those like signs of just being thirsty all the time, so she was just like, you should check to see if you have that type 1 diabetes. Went to my like school doctor after that, and they did some tests, uh, fertile levels and stuff, urine and everything. They were saying, yeah, this is like signs of type 1 diabetes. Having the colitis, the juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and the iritis, my doctor was like, oh, actually, because of all of these different things, we're gonna test you for something called the HLA-B27 gene. And they tested me for that and I had it, and that's when they sort of changed my diagnosis to ankylosing spondylitis. I did my physical and my results came back and my thyroid was all off. So they started giving me more thyroid. When you find out that you like have something wrong with you, when you feel like something's wrong, it just makes you feel so much better because it just confirms like nothing's actually wrong with you, it's just like your body is messing up. I'm not a super emotional person, but when I got my diagnosis, I cried. Half out of relief that I knew like something was wrong with me and half out of I don't know what the fuck is going on. People don't really talk about autoimmune diseases, so like, I didn't really know much about it. Imagine we were living in a world already of like driverless cars, and that's like been your whole life and you're just used to that, and then all of a sudden you wake up and then now you have a stick shift, and you have to like do this manually. It's like, oh my god, I had no idea that there were all these components to this, <laughs> like all these components to life and just basic survival. I might have a really good couple of weeks and be feeling great, and then just the next three weeks just be sick, just like every single day, and feel terrible. And also emotional things have been hard for me to come to terms with because one of the symptoms is depression, and I've battled with depression all my life, and it's hard when you're, you physically feel sick and you emotionally and mentally feel sick, and just having a support system behind you guiding you through that, because trust me, when you feel like you can't get out of bed and walk over to the bathroom because you're in pain, 
Like that will fuck things up in your head. And just making sure you're feeling loved and supported is like the most important thing. You need to have self-care. I, I think the doctor talked to me about, it was probably brought on by that stressful episode in my life that I had um, because a lot of stress can do a lot of damage to your body. So I think kind of getting diagnosed with it, it made me think like self-care is really important. And it's just made me really in tune with my body that everything works together. Like this little gland here like affects my hair and like sleep and fatigue and like body pains and things like that. It takes some time to adjust, but you sort of start to just learn and adapt and, and figure out like the extra steps that you need to take. First and foremost, like I'm Macy and I, I love to travel and I love XYZ and like I'm not this disease. Like that's like so far down in like the list of attributes that I have. I think that like if you can find the right medicine that works for you, you can live a life just like anyone else. Like there's literally nothing in the whole world that I can't do because of this disease. If you get Hashimoto's, don't panic. Actually good that you know that you have it. You can kind of take the control back and improve your life. This is not a death sentence. It's, it sucks because you might not know a lot about what's going on. I filled some time with research. I just tried to learn and also listen to yourself. Like, I still go out, I still have fun, but you like need to know your limits of what your body is capable of. And talk to people. Do not have to go about this alone because you are not alone. There are plenty of chat rooms and Facebook groups and all sorts of things where you can meet other people who are suffering from the same thing.